It's time for another calculus lesson. Now we're off schoology every single grade, and that's the story of the evolution of Wade. All right, folks, it's time for lesson 1-2 in AB Calculus. So this one's a little bit shorter, but we want to build on what we did in lesson 1-1 and do the more complicated problems now. Okay, so letter A, we've got y equals three times the quantity, remember that word from integrated three? The quantity, two x cubed plus five to the 10th power. All right, find the derivative. Step one, write y prime equals, or there's the fancy college notation, dy over dx, which can also be used, all right? We'll use that sum this year. That just means d just stands for derivative. The derivative of the equation named y with respect to x, or the variable x is what goes through the derivative process, okay? So we'll probably use this one mostly. Sometimes we'll throw this one in. There are some cases where you have to use this. That's not until the second semester, but for now, you can call it y prime. All right, what did we say last time? What happens with the power? The power comes down, multiplies the front. 10 times three, 30. All right, we're already skipping steps today. Look at that, just jump right into it. Okay, what did we say last time? Oh, this is so important right here. Okay, we made a big deal about this last time, but it didn't really stand out probably to you until now. Didn't we always say the power comes down and then the base x stays the same? Do you remember that last time? Base stays the same. Okay, that's important. The base this time, today is not x. Last time the base was just x every time, x to a power. The base is now 2x cubed plus 5, a more complicated base. The base shall remain the same. What happens to the power? Subtract one, remember? So let's just do 10 minus one in our heads and make that nine, all right? Last time, lesson 1-1, we stopped right there. This time, there's one more step that's missing. We have to take one more step to complete this. Let's make a little note right here. There's something in calculus called the chain rule. It's probably the single most important thing in all of mathematics, like specific thing, not just general limits like we talked about before. The chain rule, okay. Here's the derivative rule you'll use the entire year. Power comes to the front, multiplies, right? 10 times three. Base shall stay the same. Power dropped by one times, there's something we didn't talk about last time. Times what, Mr. Wade? You must multiply by what's called the chain or the derivative of the original base. Okay, write that down in your notes. That's what's gonna go here. That's what we call the chain, okay? You must take the derivative of the original base and put it here. So look back at your original base. It was 2x cubed plus 5. We have to take that derivative and attach it here. And this is mandatory for all derivatives. So just focus on this right now. Just focus on this. Don't look at the coefficient 3. Don't look at the power 10. Just look at 2x cubed plus 5. Remember last time, 1-1? Remember how easy it was to take the derivative of 2x cubed plus 5? 3 comes down. Three. So it's like a miniature derivative problem now, right? It's like a second derivative problem inside of a derivative problem. Three comes down. Three times two is six. Base x. X stays the same. Drop the power by one because you already used it up. Three minus one is two. Oh, and plus five. Remember constants plus five x to the zero technically becomes zero. So you don't even have to write it. If you want to add it to your notes, if that helps you remember, that's fine. But you won't have to write that in the future. Five becomes zero in the derivative, okay? All right, let's talk about something super important you may be thinking right now. What I just said was, 
every time you do a derivative the entire school year, and we will do thousands and thousands of derivatives, you must always attach the chain rule at the end, okay? Or at least think it, because sometimes it's invisible, but you still have to think about it. Now, if you think to yourself, wait a minute, didn't you just teach us a whole lesson 1-1, one -one, Mr. Wade, where you didn't mention the chain rule at all? Those were all derivatives, right? 1-1 one -one was all about derivatives. How did we get away with not doing a chain rule if I just told you that every derivative has a chain rule, but we didn't do it in 1-1, -one, right? Okay, here's the scoop, kids. Ready for this? All right, in 1-1, one -one, let's say we had like 5x to the fourth. What's the base? The base is x, not 5x, just x. When we took the derivative in 1-1, one -one, the 4 comes down, multiplies the 5. 5 times 4 is 20. The base x stays the same. The power drops to 3. And then in 1-1, one -one, I didn't make any mention of multiplying by the chain rule. No calculus teacher does. We always have to start with the basics first. But it was there. Like I just said, every derivative will have a chain rule, even if you can't see it. We couldn't see it in 1-1, because here's the deal. Isn't the chain rule the derivative of the original base, right? Here, the chain rule would be the derivative of the original base. The original base was x. Do you remember what the derivative of x is? Let's write that here. Okay, derivative of original base, right? Do you remember the derivative of x? Well, let's see, you're all fresh with this. You haven't done it a lot, so it's kind of new to you. Um, last time, if we had 5x, do you remember the derivative was 5 because the 1 came down? Uh, last time when we had, uh, if we had 7x last time, wasn't the derivative 7? You know what the derivative of 18x is? 18. Because see the 1, the hidden 1 is coming down, and then it becomes x to the 0, right? technically. Okay. So now I have ink all over my hands. You know what the derivative of 99x is? 99. Hopefully some of you are catching on now. So the derivative of number x is just number. Okay. That's, that's one of the easiest derivatives we do. The derivative of x, wouldn't that just be 1, right? 5x was 5. Isn't 1x just one. Now, if this seems complicated to you right now, of course, because it's brand new, all calculus students go through this and say, I'm a little confused. And then a couple of weeks from now, after we've practiced this a lot, I mean, it's going to be like two plus two. Literally, these rules right here are the two plus two of calculus. This is the easiest stuff in calculus. And you'll see, you'll do it over and over and over again. And every calculus student, even if you're struggling, you will look back at this and think, man, that was so easy. So don't, don't get stressed out right now if you don't understand it fully, okay? Remember, we'll discuss it some in class on the Teams meeting, and we'll also go through these a billion times, okay? So the only note that I wanted to make was last time in 1-1, every single derivative that we did had a base of just plain old x. And the derivative of x is 1 so there was a chain rule after every single term you wrote down, there was a secret times one, times one, times one. But you don't have to write times one. It doesn't matter, right? Today, the base is more complicated than x. 2x cubed plus 5 is more complicated than just x. So you'll, you'll see the chain rule because it's more complicated now. Now I can see a more complex chain rule, okay? So we secretly did the chain rule last time. We just didn't mention it. Now it matters. All right, let's get back to the problem. All right, so we have y prime equals 30, 2x cubed plus 5 to the ninth. You can drop the 0 right here. You don't need that. And because this is a monomial, remember integrated class, monomial, single term. If it's a single term, you don't need the parentheses. You can just drop those. Now, if it's a binomial, two terms, three terms, four terms, you know, trinomials, polynomials, 
you have to keep the parentheses. Single term, you can drop the parentheses. You can put a times if you want. You don't even have to put a multiplication symbol. You can. All right. Now, uh, that answer on a test, probably minus one. I might let it slide on test one. It's not a great answer, but it's a pretty good answer. Okay. If, if you can get to here, you've done well. Now, here's the thing. This is a monomial because it's a single term. This is a monomial because it's a single term. You must multiply if you have two monomials. You must join them together. It's really going to help you later in the class. So y prime equals. So you must go ahead and do 30 times 6x squared. So 30 times 6, or just do 3 times 6 in your head, right? 3 times 6 is 18. So 30 times 6, isn't that just 18 followed by a 0? 180, and drag the x squared along with it, okay? And then just put this down, 2x cubed plus 5 quantity to the ninth, and that's as far as you can go, right there. There's the perfect answer. All right, let's try another one. The only way to get good at calculus is by repetition. Let's do this over and over and over again. Okay, y equals 7 times the cube root of x squared plus 3x plus 7. First, radical. We don't need that radical, do we? Don't we need coefficient, base, exponent, right? Coefficient, base, exponent. This is coefficient radical. Let's fix it. All right, equals coefficient 7. Okay. Cube root, so let's make this radical into a parentheses. Here's my base. This is the inside of the radical right here. And we have a third root. Remember roots on the bottom? Just like a flower, just like a plant. And we put the power on the top. Hmm, that's not the power. We're talking about the quantity power, the whole power. Don't look at that right there. Did you know that this is all secretly going to the first power? Because like everything in the world is going to the first power pretty much. So guess what? It's all without power designated, so that means it's actually secretly to the first power while being the third root simultaneously, okay? So that's a nice little trick. If you don't see the one there, it really is there. Don't use that too. That's not the overall power. All right, what's next? Let's jump into the derivative. Y prime equals, or to be fancy, dy over dx equals. All right, seven stays there, and doesn't the one-third come down and multiply it? Seven times one-third, right? The base, the base always stays the same. Okay, what happens to the power? The exponent minus one times our new trick today in 1-2. Times what? Times the chain rule. Figure out what the chain rule is. All right, what's the chain rule? The chain rule is the derivative of the original base. Remember that? Okay, you can see it both places. So the chain rule is the derivative of the original base. We never did take the derivative of x squared plus 3x plus 7. We set it aside like we're supposed to. But you never did address it, so eventually you have to address this. So ignore the 7, ignore the 1 -third, just focus on this. What's the derivative of just x squared plus 3x plus 7? All right, what's the derivative of x squared? 2 to the front, base x stays the same, to the 2 minus 1 is 1, or just 2x, okay? What's the derivative of 3x? What did we say earlier? What's the derivative of number x? Number. Isn't that just plus 3? Okay, what actually happened there? Wasn't there a first power secretly that came down, multiplied 3, 3 times 1 is 3, x to the 0, right? And then do you remember what happened to constants last lesson, 1-1? One -one? All constants, the derivative is 0. The derivative of 7 is nothing. That's your chain rule right there, okay? That's the chain in the chain rule. And that is probably the single most important thing in any level of mathematics, in my opinion. 
because it's in every single derivative and derivatives are super duper important. All right, let's clean it up and we're done with that one. Y prime equals, what's seven times one third? Isn't that seven over one times one over three? A rare opportunity here to not cross cancel because we always have the cross cancellation, right? There's no cross cancel this time. So you just leave it seven times one is seven. One times three is three. Seven thirds is your coefficient. Base x squared plus three x plus seven. So the what? One third minus one is the new exponent now. What is one third minus one? We don't have a common denominator, do we? We have a trick for that though. Could we disguise one as something else? We can. Remember that one is actually three out of three, right? So one third minus three thirds. One minus three is negative two over the common denominator of three. And then we just bring down this 2x plus 3. Oh, this time we have to keep it in parentheses, right? Because it's a binomial. Two or more terms, you got to keep your parentheses. If that had just been one term, you could have dropped the parentheses. Not this time. Okay, let's see if you see anything wrong here. I do. I see one thing wrong. Well, that you can't leave. Even though it's correct, you can't leave it in your final answer. Negative power. If you said that at home, nice job. Okay, let's do our final answer. Let's just make like one big fraction bar here, actually. Okay? Don't negative powers move things, right? So integrated classes, negative power on the bottom moves it to the top. Negative power on the top moves it to the bottom. We've got to figure out if this circle is on the top or the bottom right now. It's on the side. It's on the side of the 7 thirds. But remember 1 dash 1? Side means top. So really that's up there with the 7 technically right now. Okay? The negative will move it from the top where it's next to the 7 to the bottom where it's sitting next to the 3. So on the bottom we've got a 3. We now have quantity x squared plus 3x plus 7 to the no longer negative 2 thirds, positive 2 thirds. All right, now that's fixed. Now who's on the top? 7 was upstairs, leave it there. And our chain rule is technically over 1, not that you would write that, but our chain rule is also on the top. So keep that in parentheses. Okay? That's actually a really good answer right there. All right? There's one more thing we could do, though. So this is full credit on the first test, but remember one thing. If you're thinking, should I distribute the 7 through the parentheses, actually, that's not required. All right? The last problem, we had a monomial times a monomial. One term, one term. You had to multiply those in the, in the first example monomial to a binomial. You could distribute, but there's no need to do that. It's actually a disadvantage in calculus to do that here. So I think I would just leave it just like that. This is what I'd rather fix, all right? Didn't the problem begin in a radical form, right? So shouldn't we return to radical form? Because some college professors could have a fit about that. And on the AP test, it may not match the multiple choice answer. So the top is okay. It's the bottom we need to fix. So this is what I would rather you do. And again, you're in calculus because you're all overachievers. So I would rather you go ahead and be an overachiever. What does the three mean? Third root. Put a little three and a long radical. What does the two mean? Second power, quantity squared. So let's write down our quantity all squared. And that's why you learn all those fractional powers in integrated class, so that moments like this do not frighten you. Okay? Full credit, better answer, minus one if you get this far. That's not bad. Okay? But we'll have to clean that up in the future. All right, letter C. f of x equals 3 over 4 times the square root of 3x plus 5. 
and we have to find a derivative. Let's say we're studying the motion of a roller coaster or some kind of velocity in real life. Uh, let's say we're studying the, the slope or steepness of something, all really important stuff. So that's not in the proper form. There are two problems. Problem number one, there's a radical. Don't need that, do we? Problem number two, X is on the bottom. That's also not good. We got to get that X up to the top without a radical, as we've done before. Let's do it. Three's on the top, keep it there. Four's on the bottom, keep it there. Draw a fraction bar. Three-fourths is your coefficient, actually. But this right here, we're going to detach it and throw it up to the side, and side means top. So let's put this on the side as the quantity 3x plus 5. Now, what power is this? It's a radical. That's not good, right? Isn't the radical to the second root, because there's no number up there, so it's the second root automatically, but at the same time, isn't it all going to the first power? And if you remember an integrated class, all square roots, just plain old square roots, become one half power, all right? So it's really 3x plus 5 to the one half power. But when you move it upstairs where we've put it now, side means top. Remember that the power becomes now negative, all right? So if you were good at integrated class, which I'm sure you all were because you're in calculus now, that's how you got here. And if you have strong algebraic skills, you will breeze through calculus because it's just a bunch of algebra, basically. All right, let's take the derivative. f prime of x, or the super fancy notation, instead of dy dx, it's d f of x on the side dx. That's the weirdest craziest looking, fanciest notation they use in college for a derivative right there. We'll see it occasionally. We can write f prime of x for now. All right, what do we do? 3 fourths coefficient gets multiplied by the power. So the exponent comes down, we multiply by negative 1 half. Base, 3x plus 5, base always stays the same. right? Old power, you subtract 1. But our new thing today, multiply by the chain rule. You must multiply by the derivative of the original base, 3x plus 5. So going back to the original base, remember what the derivative of 3x is? Derivative of 3x is just 3. And the derivative of 5 is plus 0, but you wouldn't have to put that, right? Because constants go to 0, okay? Optional parentheses, all you really had to do is write 3, okay? Let's jump down here. f prime of x equals no cross cancel with the 3 and 2. So 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. 4 times 2 is 8. Base is 3x plus 5 to the negative one-half minus one. We need a common denominator. Isn't one two out of two, right? So negative one minus two is negative three, and the common denominator stays two. All right, now the three plus zero, the chain rule, is just times three at the very end, okay? Who's observant? Who notices that Mr. Wade changed his shirt? <laughs> If you're wondering why I changed my shirt, this shot somehow got deleted and I had to go back and film it like 24 hours later. So here we are. So now for our final answer, let's draw one big long fraction bar, okay? Who's on top? Negative three. Who's on the bottom? Eight. Where is this guy right here? This is on the side, which means top. So therefore, the negative tells it to go from the top to the bottom. 
3x plus 5, no longer to the negative 3 over 2, but the positive 3 over 2. And where's this 3 since it's technically 3 over 1? 3 is on the top with the other 3. We'll go to the other board over here where I have more room. Final answer. Okay. Negative 3 times 3. So the top is going to be negative 9. There's your numerator. 8 times the quantity. Now hold on a second. 3 over 2. That's exponent form. Didn't we start in radical form? So we should go back to radical form. So 3x plus 2 and it was square root. The two on the bottom is the square root. And the three on the top is quantity cubed. So we'll just slide that underneath the radical there. And that is the perfect answer. All right, problem D, the last one. F of x equals two over x squared minus 49. Now, scan for any issues we might have here. We need this to be derivative ready, all right? It's a little slang that I like to use in my class, derivative ready. So, is it derivative ready? Are there any radicals? No. Are there any x's on the bottom? Oops, there's an x on the bottom. Yeah, we can't have that. We need, remember, we need coefficient base to the power. So, let's fix this. Figure out what power the base is going to. Is it going to the second? No, don't look at that. Remember that everything is secretly to the first unless otherwise noted. We could have some problems in the future where all this is to the seventh power, let's say. But if there was nothing there, you have to tell yourself, oh, that's the first power. Now, x's can't be on the bottom. So when we drag it to the top, the coefficient is 2. The base is x squared minus 49. What's the power? Kids at home, studio audience, what is it? Who said it? Negative one? I hope you did. Negative first power. Now that is coefficient base power. That's derivative ready. Okay, f prime of x equals exponent power down to the front. Two times negative one, negative two. Base always stays the same, right? Anybody say it before I finish this? We used to do that in integrated class. Okay, base stays the same. Old power subtract one, negative one minus one, negative two. Well, I guess I'm done. I guess I'll walk over to my podium of bad ideas. Wait a minute, remember that game? Don't you have to multiply by the chain rule, which is times? What's the derivative of the original base x squared minus 49? Like it's a brand new derivative problem. Okay, derivative of x squared, two comes down, two x to the first. Two x first is implied, minus, Derivative of a constant, zero. You don't have to put minus zero. You don't even have to put parentheses unless you really want to, but you don't need to, all right? The derivative of x squared minus 49 is simply 2x. That is the chain in the chain rule right there, okay? And every derivative has a chain rule, even if you don't see it because they were invisible in 1-1. They're all visible today. All right, f prime of x equals, okay. Two things you can do to finish this off. We can literally get this done in one step right here, okay? Don't leave a negative power. Where is this, top or bottom? It's all on the top because these are all over one, right? So this is currently on the top, but negative two says you have to go back to the bottom where it will be quantity x squared minus 49 to the now positive two, right? Now, who's left on top? Negative 2 and 2x. But isn't that a monomial times a monomial? Single term times single term. Remember, you must combine those. You must tell me what negative 2 times 2x is. Negative 4x. And voila. There is the perfect answer. All right? So chain rule, probably the most important thing of the entire year right there. We're going to use it a bunch. Okay. Do the homeworks. 
In class, we will discuss the solutions to 1-1 one, one, and 1-2, one, both of them. And then you can tell me, hey, a lot of us are missing number two on 1-2 one or number three on 1-1 one, one, or whatever. And we'll go through it on the board in class live. All right? So I will see you in class.